Hello, I'm Chris Ashmore. And I'm Andrea Gilligan. Welcome, Welcome to, to Donegal, Donegal TV. TV. We're delighted to bring you the first of four programmes from Donegal TV. In this first programme, we'll be looking forward to the Donegal Gathering and hearing from one of its ambassadors, Packy Bonner. We'll also have an exclusive interview with the highest ranking officer in the US Army who has strong Donegal connections. Plus a look at some of Donegal's up and coming business entrepreneurs. Our second programme will focus on Jim McGuinness, Donegal's All-Ireland Senior Football Championship winning manager, who is such an inspiration both on and off the field. In future programmes, we'll feature actor Sean McGinley, record-breaking long-distance swimmer and joint Donegal Person of the Year, Anne-Marie Ward, and US Homeland Security Officer, Noel Maloney, who has strong Donegal links. We'll also have a number of other special features here on Donegal TV. This is a very important year for Donegal tourism, not least because of the gathering. Donegal County Council is certainly playing its part in trying to promote the event and trying to attract more tourists here to the northwest region. The Mayor of County Donegal is Councillor Frank McBrearty and he's very supportive of the entire event and believes the county has an awful lot to offer. Well, Donegal is unique because of the diverse culture that's in Donegal. Um, we have mixed communities, uh, especially here in the east of the county. And then we have the west of the county, which has a unique landscape, uh, probably second to none in Europe. And uh, what we have to offer, places like Sleeve League, uh, places like Kelly Beggs, Burton Port, and many other uh, places to visit along the west coast uh, and the east of the county as well. I think that uh, the diverse culture is very, very important uh, because of the diaspora that we have right around the world, in Australia, New Zealand, even as far as China, uh, and of course the US. Donegal County Council sometimes takes a lot of criticism, but this is one of the positive sides of Donegal County Council and the way that they've worked to promote Donegal, especially with the trips to the US, uh, especially to Boston over the last number of years. And I think the fact that we have now a diaspora award, uh, the Tip O'Neill, Diaspora Award, which started here last September and will, will continue every year from last year on. I think that that shows what we have to offer and the fact that somebody like Tip O'Neill, one of the most powerful politicians in the US, uh, ancestors actually came from Donegal. Donegal TV has produced four programmes about the gathering. The manager of Donegal TV, Paul McLoon, and the chairman of the Donegal Gathering Organising Committee, Paddy Hart, have been telling us what it's all about. Well, Donegal TV was formed earlier this year when a number of us got together. Uh, Shane Wallace from Wallace Media, uh, people in the LYIT, uh, some people in the media in the county, and of course the private sector and many of the public agencies, including the County Council and Falch Ireland. And we looked at how we could get more programming about Donegal. And of course, we're all concerned at the number of young people emigrating from the county yet again. So we thought we'd form our own TV station and put out program, programs, especially in the year of the gathering, because we, we need a mechanism to talk to the people in the county itself, and of course, more importantly, all the people who have left the county. So we hope that this initiative is successful. If it is, we will keep it running online, and maybe in the autumn, we'll uh, produce another suite of programs. So hopefully this will work out, and we hope it will celebrate the gathering, especially the Donegal gathering. The gathering is a national initiative. It's an invitation uh, for people to celebrate all that is great about their home place. It's an invitation from us uh, on the island to everyone uh, beyond the island uh, to come home and join us in a celebration this year. Donegal is one of the best places in the world. Whether that's a panoramic view of the Atlantic Ocean and Malin Head, whether it's along the meandering banks of the River Finn, whether it's the spectacular scenery of the west of the county and all under the watchful eye of our highest mountain, Erica. It's God's own country uh, and every day uh, that I drive through it 
I always stop and think to myself, what a wonderful place and what a wonderful place to share. The highest ranking officer in the armed forces in the United States of America and principal military advisor to President Barack Obama is the grandson of a Donegal emigrant. Donegal TV caught up with General Martin Dempsey in New York. Few people in Ireland have heard of General Martin Dempsey, but he is a hugely significant figure in America. In fact, he's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest ranking officer in the armed forces in the United States. For a man with humble beginnings, his career path has been extremely impressive, especially when you consider his present role. I'm the senior officer in the United States Armed Forces, and specifically I advise uh, the Secretary of Defense, the National Security Advisor, and the President on all issues related to the use of military power around the world. And uh, I also chair the Joint Chiefs, which is the heads of each service, so Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and actually the Coast Guard comes into those sessions as well. So I, I chair that body. <clears throat> and then uh, I also have a relationship with the combatant commanders, Central Command, European Command, Africa Command, Pacific Command, and so forth, in, in the, uh, as we form a national security strategy. Last year, the former chief of staff was asked by President Barack Obama to take up his new position. I was honored to be asked. Uh, I was, uh, when asked, I was in the job as chief of staff of the Army. So I was the senior Army officer in the land. And then he asked if I would take the next step and become the chairman of all the armed forces. And, I, you know, I, I do point out to people... Uh, uh, that I'm Irish. I think I might be the first Irish chairman. I'm not sure of that, but I'll lay claim to it anyway. Having been educated in Catholic schools, he then went to the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. Following West Point, General Dempsey married his high school sweetheart, Deanie. They have three children. General Dempsey embarked on a military career which has seen him stationed all over the world. The support of his family has been invaluable. I, I don't think you could get to this particular job without a supportive spouse. And, and I think you know as well that all three of my children served in the military. Two of them went to West Point, as I did, and one went to uh, Wake Forest University and then commissioned through the Reserve Officers Training uh, course. One of them remains on service. He's a t he, t he actually teaches history at West Point, and he's on his way to Afghanistan this summer. So. This is a, it's a family endeavor, and uh, because of that, it, it helps me stay in touch with what's happening well below me. Uh, and it also makes me extraordinarily proud that they would, fo they would follow in their father's footsteps. He wasn't that keen on a career in the Army, but his Irish mother then interfered. I went to West Point, uh, be frankly, because my mother asked me to give it a, sh give it a try. What, what happened was I, I took the physical and the um, intellectual aptitude tests for Annapolis, for the Naval Academy. And by the way, part of that was because of my Uncle Jack, who you met earlier. He had been in the Navy. He had kind of indoctrinated me, if you will, brainwashed even maybe, uh, into thinking that the Navy was the superior service. So when it came time, I applied to a couple of Catholic universities around the country, applied to uh, Annapolis, uh, the Naval Academy. And, and as it turned out, to take the physical, I had to go over to West Point, and uh, while I was over there, a couple of the people working entrance credentials asked if I would consider going to West Point. Now, remember, I was a polite Irish Catholic young man, and I never would say no to, you know, to that kind of offer. So I said, sure, I'd be, I'd be open-minded to it. I didn't think anything more of it. And then um, I didn't get into the Naval Academy because of my eyesight. And so I was ready to go to Manhattan College right here in New York City. And I got an appointment to the Military Academy at West Point on the 29th of June with a report date of 1 July. And I wasn't all that enamored of the idea because I had kind of mentally passed by that. And, um, but my mother called me home. I, was, I think I was down at the Jersey Shore or someplace. And she called me home and asked me to consider it. And I said, no, I just, I'm not interested, Mom. And she did what any good self-respecting Irish mother would do in that circumstance. She broke down into tears, completely brought me to my knees, and I said I'd give it a try. And here I am, you know, 38 years later. Well, 42 years later, if you count West Point. So I went there just to, you know, to tell my mom I gave it a shot. And then once I got there, 
I became seized with the value system, with the challenge, with the discipline. You know, it just made you feel good about being part of something like that, and I stuck with it. Various officers and figures in history have inspired him during his career. That's how your, your flame gets lit, if you will, is by what happens at the very lowest level. And then as you progress through the ranks, you start to look around and sometimes find people who are who, who you think um, kind of exemplify what you'd like to be. And I've, had, I've been blessed by any number of those. Uh, I mean, I could name them, but... Um, and then figures in history. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of George Marshall and how he, not only what he accomplished, but how he carried himself. The greatest source of inspiration comes from, you know, at the lowest levels. That's what encourages you, inspires you to keep at it. And then as you go through, you, you kind of forge your own way. He's certainly proud of his roots, and his Irish heritage is very important to him. I have a, just a deep appreciation for my roots, uh, my religion, my family, all of which I think uh, makes us you know, better people who, who uh, maybe can understand the challenges other people around the world face. Ranafast, in the West Donegal Gaeltacht, is a far cry from the likes of the Pentagon and New York. His grandfather's homestead is nestled between the rolling hills and the Atlantic waves streaming onto the storm-lashed beaches. In 1926, John Ogue Deveni left by train from Crawley for Derry and boarded the New York-bound Cameronia. His first cousin, Donaha Deveni, still lives in Ranafast. He would dearly love to see Ireland formally recognising General Dempsey. I'd love to see him coming as, a, as an official guest of the state, all right. No doubt about that. I would love that. And Donaha is proud of the Donegal connections. Recently, Donaha and other members of his family got to meet General Martin Dempsey in New York. In a sense, this was a sort of meeting that typifies the whole thinking behind the gathering, bringing families together. Joining Donaha were his sons John and Joe Deveni and Hugh Boner, who is married to Donaha's daughter. So has General Dempsey any plans to come to Donegal? The answer is yes. It will probably happen uh, with very short notice. My, my obligations in this job are rather overwhelming. And when I do show up places in this job, I bring this extraordinarily long tail of communicators and security uh, personnel with me. So it wouldn't be, uh, you'd probably be sorry you asked if I showed up. But if I can find a time to do it while I'm still the chairman, I will. What I will promise you is that, um, for a fact, when I finish my tour as the chairman, we will go back to Ireland as a first priority. And I do need to expand my horizons beyond County Mayo and up into uh, Sligo and Donegal. Where else, just a few hours away, would you find discoverireland.ie forward slash Donegal, right here, right now. McGee, a family-run business established in 1866. The McGee brand is built around 146 years of real heritage. We are distinctive with our colourful fabrics, inspired by the rich tapestry of the Donegal sea and landscape. The McGee collection includes menswear, womenswear and home accessories. Renowned for our tweed, we have worked this traditional fabric into contemporary garments and products. Our home accessories are designed and made in Donegal. Shop online at www.mcgee1866.com. Four Lanterns Restaurant, serving the North West since 1971. Home of the legendary Big Four and Snack Box. Assortment of kids' meals. Meal deals of the week. Quality, fresh food at affordable prices. Located in Letterkenny, Buncrana and Donegal Town. Also at the Courtyard Restaurant and Cafe. Follow us on Facebook and visit one of our many locations throughout Donegal. Colab, turning knowledge into enterprise. Home to your new business idea. 
Located at Letterkenny Institute of Technology. Create your own future and choose Colab as the home for your innovation and technology business idea. Visit colab.ie. Your business journey begins here. Kelly's Toyota is the main Toyota dealership in County Donegal since 1974, located in Port Road, Letterkenny, and Mount Charles providing a variety of services from full service body repairs, NCT and DOE testing, and even car hire. Kelly's Toyota has it all. So if you're in the market for a new or used car, van, or commercial vehicle, give us a call or visit us online at www.kellystoyota.com. Kelly's Toyota, the best built cars in the world. Discover third level education opportunities at Letterkenny Institute of Technology with two campuses in Ireland's Northwest. Letterkenny and Kelly Beggs. Our schools provide a wide variety of programmes with awards right up to Masters and Doctorate level. Visit www.lyit.ie. Welcome back to part two of the show. The Donegal County Enterprise Board Business Awards recognise some of the up-and-coming businesses in the county. Small businesses form the backbone of the economy and will be vital in its recovery. This year's awards featured 10 up-and-coming businesses. These may be challenging times, but the strength, determination and entrepreneurial spirit of local businesses was very much in evidence at the Enterprising Donegal Business Awards for 2013. These awards recognise some of the achievements and successes in small businesses that are at the backbone of the Donegal economy. Hosted by the Donegal County Enterprise Board and held in the Villa Rose Hotel in Bally Buffet, the awards attracted a very high standard of entry. For the first time, there was a special Student Business Proposition Competition Award run in conjunction with Letterkenny Institute of Technology. The winners were Deborah Crane third, Sean McDade second and Andrew Martin. In the Emerging Business category, the finalists were Lorraine Boyce, Chartered Physiotherapist, Christopher Lynch and Jonathan Doherty of Efficient Heating and Plumbing and Peter Campbell of the Lone Star State Limited, who won the award. His company specialises in original sci-fi graphic novels in print and digital format. In the community business category, the finalists were Inishone Tourism, Letterkenny Community Childcare and the winners Castlefin Community Partnership Initiative, which has developed a centre that provides a range of services for the local community, as well as being a focal point for events and small start-up companies, its award was accepted by Michael Carlin. The Business Achievement Award finalists were Ireland's oldest place of pilgrimage, Loch Derg, Gibson and Associates Solicitors, Road Team Limited and the Stateside American Restaurant Limited. The winner was Patricia Hill of Stateside American Restaurant Limited, whose Letterkenny restaurant brings a taste of America to County Donegal and also has a franchising potential. A special award for outstanding contribution to business went to Loch Derg, which continues to attract thousands of pilgrims each year. For Deborah Maxwell, it was a case of mixed emotions, as it coincided with her last day as manager. The overall winner was announced by Michael Tunney of the Donegal County Enterprise Board. This year's winner is Road Team Limited. The Winners Road Team Limited is a Pettigo-based road recycling company that restores road surfaces to original conditions, recycling existing road materials. For Adrian and John Britton, it was a very proud moment. The level of the competition is very high. Uh, we didn't expect to win. Uh, we'd like to thank the County Enterprise Board for all they've done for us over the last number of years and all their hard work and maybe our hard work has paid off. The first work we done when we started out was in Ironmore Island and we have moved in from Ironmore we've moved all through Ireland we've gone on to Scotland and our next ventures into Wales. John Britton explains how they have kept the business. Recession times you just have to work harder and longer and keep up with it the best you can. Every turn around you have to look for the opportunity to get more work. 
the contribution that the small business sector makes to Donegal was highlighted by Michael Tunney, Chief Executive Officer of the County Enterprise Board. 95% of our businesses are small businesses, therefore we depend very much on them in every community, town and village in the county to create employment and wealth uh, and retain our, our people in our county. Despite the challenges, he remains upbeat about the prospects for small businesses. The awards like tonight allowed small businesses and business people in the county to start saying, yeah, we are a good county, we have good businesses. Yes, we have the same difficulties, but we have a future. And I think our location being close to Northern Ireland, very familiar with the UK market, so exporting and sales in the Northern Ireland and the UK is not an issue for us. So we do that second thought. The Donegal County Manager, Seamus Neely, expressed his delight at the quality of businesses involved. It's great to see so many people here tonight participating. It's great to see uh, such energy within the, the small business sector, a very important sector for the county, indeed one that we rely on very much at the moment and one that we will have a huge reliance on into the future. So what I see here tonight is very encouraging. For anyone interested in starting your own business, make the Donegal County Enterprise Board your first port of call. We're there to help. We provide a range of services, business information, mentoring, right through to grant aid, management development and training. Uh, our contact is through our Enterprise uh, Board website, www.donegalenterprise.ie or through our, uh, our telephone line 0749160735 and we're there to assist both existing businesses who want to develop and expand or just improve their own management capability or to any individual who's thinking about setting up a business to come and talk to us and we can at least advise and guide and again we function as a first point of contact in the county so uh, it, we're basically a conduit to access the other agencies as well. Former Glasgow Celtic and Republic of Ireland goalkeeper Packy Bonner is proud of his roots. He's one of the ambassadors for the Donegal Gathering and he's been fondly remembering his childhood, his playing days and unwinding in Donegal. Okay, this is where I was brought up, uh, roaming these fields, uh, the sea in the background, my mum's house uh, is here um, and uh, I think there was ten of us in the family at that particular time, seven kids and uh, my mum and dad and my grandmother lived with us and uh, but uh, it was a wonderful upbringing I lived here till I was 18 years old uh, and every time I come back uh, I always sort of yearn to get back into the spot because when you come over this hill and you see the sea and you see Oe Island on one side, Arnmore on the other side, Critch Island here then fantastic. But this place here is, is a great place to be able to come, switch off from all the pressures of life and just come and um, whether sitting in front of a fire, uh, thinking, uh, reading a book, uh, whatever, or going for a walk along the beach, going out in a boat, going fishing. I used to love coming here for the summer and uh, maybe taking a couple of days out in the boat, doing a bit of fishing and no mobile phone, no emails, nothing. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, my advice now to people this year, especially this year, the year of the gathering, is to come back. Look, look what, what we have here. Um, we may not have the cities or all of the things that you're used to, but we have something very, very special. Well, when you have a place like this where you can leave the house and within two minutes, you can walk down here and walk along this beach. And this is a place where I used to come to reflect and get away from all the pressures of life uh, before maybe any of the big tournaments or the big games. I'd come down here and sort of walk and just get my mind right and think all positive, all positive. You couldn't think anything else, of course. Uh, so no better place. And look, look at the beaches we have, the sea. This is particularly a nice day. But even when it's rough out there, when that sea is going mad, there's this particular beauty about it also. Uh, around this coast and, uh, and you come here and uh, you certainly can enjoy yourself you can reflect on on life uh, and uh, enjoy the hospitality and I predict that you'll come back for many more occasions after that. Okay welcome to uh, Central Park in Keju right out in the northwest uh, corner of the county out here right on the coastline and this is where Keju Rovers Played, and this is really where I started off my football career as a young boy. The club is probably now, must be about 120 years old nearly, approximately. Uh, we came over here with a team, a uh, Celtic reserve team, and played the uh, centenary game here in Central Park. And it was a big occasion, it was probably about maybe over a thousand people here on that particular day. And it was uh, to celebrate uh, a club that's been around for a long, long time. And uh, they started off in the North West League here and then progressed into the Donegal League. And then they played for a number of years in the Ulster Senior League and now they're back in the Donegal League. I think they won, they won last year the division. Division 2 Championship. Well, when you when you look at the scenery here and you look at a day like this, 
And I've always said that anybody who comes to Donegal and they get a week of good weather, there is no better place to be anywhere on the earth. And I've travelled a lot, and I've, I know this, than here in this part of Donegal. Well, my memories of Finn Park is since I was a young kid coming up here, watching uh, the games and watching my heroes. And this was a, a special place for us to come because we didn't have a lot of football on TV at that time and so on. And when you came up here, you would come up to watch the Brendan Bradleys and the Charlie Ferries and Terry Harkins and Chang Smith and Peter Hutton and uh, Jerry Murray, of course, and goals. And standing behind that goal over there, uh, watching the, my heroes playing. And they had a huge influence on what I was dreaming about of being a, being a professional footballer someday and coming here. And I was there behind that goal with my brother Dennis uh, watching it and you know they had a fantastic team of course they beat Finn Harps um, by a lot of goals that particular over the two legs and the Archie Gemmels and uh, Roy McFarlane's and uh, Hinton and Hector in the middle, middle of the pitch and Colin Todd those were before I went I had two matches with Finn Harps one against Ballymena United here um, and then I played against Stoke City or Finn Park was a special pitch that you always wanted to come and try and play, especially when it was nice and dry and during the summer. There was, it was probably the only pitch in Donegal that was, was special at that particular time. I know the facilities have improved dramatically over the years, uh, but it was great to be able to play. And I also played against in a school's final here. Yeah, McCool Park, the home of Donegal GA, uh, with the Brian McEniffs and the Anthony Carls and Noel McCall and Golds, a great Neely Gallagher from Guidor, um, Horry McShay, all those guys, uh, and I, I had a dream also, of course, playing for Donegal sometime, maybe in All-Ireland, didn't quite get there, but I did play with Donegal, that was a great, great, great time, and of course Donegal have done so well now over the last, I was in Crow Park in that famous day in 1992 when they won the All-Ireland, and I was there again uh, last year when, when they won it, for me, putting the county jersey on, uh, whether it was in soccer or in Gaelic or whatever, uh, was was something that most young boys dream about. When I played midfield, uh, I used to catch the ball. I, I, I had that sort of natural ability to go up and catch the ball for kickouts and different things. Uh, and in, in Gaelic, uh, because you were up against other guys who actually could also catch the ball, you tended to go a bit early and try and catch the ball above the, ball above them. Uh, and when I transferred that back into soccer, I used to miss the odd cross because I was going underneath the ball. So I had to adapt my game a little bit. But again, you know, I think I think if you can play as many sports as you can when you're young, uh, especially when you're up to about the age of 12 years old, if you have two or three sports that you can actually play, one complements the other. As you get older, probably if you're good enough at a sport, then you have to almost go down one track uh, and maybe have a complimentary sport like golf or something where you can relax. But overall, I think if you work together and both sports, all sports, can, can uh, complement one another. Well, that's all we've time for in this first edition of Donegal TV. Join us again next week when we'll have a special feature with Jim McGuinness, the Donegal Person of the Year, the All-Ireland Championship winning manager who's proved to be such an inspiration both on and off the field. You can also watch this programme again on donegaltv.ie, on Facebook and on Twitter. And if you want to contact us, you can email us on info at donegaltv.ie. Slán, August Bannock.